the right to vote. It's an idea that has evolved continuously since the country's birth. People have fought for it, people have died for it. And today, high school and college students enjoy that right. When a U.S. citizen turns 18 years old, they're guaranteed the right to vote. They have a choice. But it wasn't that long ago when high school graduates didn't have that opportunity. They could be drafted into the military and go into battle for their country. But they couldn't go to the ballot box. They could give their life for their country. But they didn't have a say about who was running the country. That changed in 1971 with the passage of the 26th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. And a West Virginia senator named Jennings Randolph led the charge. Let's go back to 1942. World War II was raging. The United States needed more soldiers to boost troop support in Europe. So, President Franklin Roosevelt, by executive order, lowered the draft age from 21 to 18. It didn't seem right or fair to then-Congressman Jennings Randolph. He took to the floor of the House of Representatives to exclaim that if these young men are old enough for bullets, then they're old enough for ballots. Senator Randolph was deeply, passionately concerned about the ability for 18, 19, and 20-year-olds to vote. If this young person is going to lay down their life for all of us to have the freedoms that we enjoy, we ought to at least give them the right to be able to go and cast their ballot. The years passed. More wars raged. The effort to reduce the voting age to match the military draft age failed again and again. One of those young men who served was Robert Thompson. He was drafted to fight in Vietnam and began his tour in 1966, just before he was old enough to vote. He died serving his country the following year. Back home, the sister of a soldier drafted into the military without the right to vote and who lost his life fighting for his country would become the first 18-year-old in the nation to register to vote because of the passage of the 26th Amendment. And she would be the first to signal in a new era of voting rights. She was 18. I was a work-study student and working at Davis and Elkins College. Somebody opened an office door and said, Senator Randolph wants to know if we have an 18-year-old that would be willing to go with him to register to vote. Uh, so they said, will you be willing to do it? And I said, yes. On the ride there, Ms. Thompson told the senator about her brother dying in battle before he had the right to vote. He was struck and deeply moved. He said, you know, you're an 18-year-old. You go off to fight a war. You should have that right to vote. Jennings Randolph personally escorted the young lady who was the first person to register to vote to the courthouse in Elkins. That was real devotion. I realized you know, the impact that it would have and, and how many people it was going to impact, but it was a little bit later when I realized I'm getting to do something my brother did not get to do and I really wish he would have been able to do. Jennings Randolph was born and raised in Salem, West Virginia. His mark in the Mountain State can be found all around. Jennings Randolph Lake, Jennings Randolph Elementary, Jennings Randolph Bridge, the Jennings Randolph Center for Public Service at Salem University. Testaments to a rich legacy. Named after William Jennings Bryan, both of his grandfathers had been mayors of Salem. After a stint in journalism and teaching, he began a long career in public service. He served in the U.S. House of Representatives from 1933 to 1947. He witnessed Franklin D. Roosevelt sworn in as president. He was there during World War II. He was there when President Roosevelt reduced the draft age to 18. In 1942, he first introduced an amendment that would lower the voting age to match the military draft age. The legislation failed, but his efforts continued. He lost a re-election campaign in 1946, but joined the U.S. Senate 12 years later. He never gave up. He comes back as a U.S. Senator and picks up where he left off. He didn't miss a beat. James Randolph would have said, this is a republic we have, and this is a representative form of democracy, and it only works if the people are able to choose who they want and make sure that the people that are chosen understand who they're working for. Randolph would continue his call to pass the 26th Amendment, but it would take 11 more years.
During his time away, calls for change grew louder. President Dwight D. Eisenhower in 1954 became the first president to publicly support it. Then, in the 1960s, during Vietnam, public support for the 26th Amendment grew, and citizens were placing more and more pressure on lawmakers to lower the voting age. There was so much more dissension about what the war was and what people were getting involved in. The rallying cry came, look, these kids are being drafted, they're being expected to go off to war. They can't vote. They have no influence on the political life that is influencing their going off to war. My fellow friends were going to Vietnam. My brother was in Vietnam. And I thought, this is bad that they can go to Vietnam and not be, have the right to vote. Young men were dying for their country. They couldn't vote. Young people back home were fighting for civil rights. They couldn't vote. Randolph heard their demands. He made sure his colleagues in Congress did too. He echoed what he'd argued decades earlier. You gotta understand, Randolph was a person of great integrity. When people talked to Randolph, they knew that they could take it to the bank. Many states were passing laws to lower the voting age, but some argued the youth lacked good judgment and common sense. But Randolph reminded them that soldiers younger than 21 fought alongside George Washington at Valley Forge. Alexander Hamilton was 19. John Marshall was 18. These soldiers would become some of the nation's greatest leaders. I think he recognized that people at that age need to develop a relationship with what's going to be affecting them as life goes on. In 1971, the Senate voted 94 to 0 to propose the constitutional amendment. The House followed suit. 38 states ratified it that same year just 100 days for what Randolph had been championing for three decades. Old enough to fight, old enough to vote. He'd introduced legislation for that amendment 11 times over 29 years. He would have done it 11 times more. He got it done, he finally got it done. And that just showed you the perseverance that he had. Many would say, rather than inherit the country they lived in at the age of 21, be an active participant at age 18, 19, and 20. And his persistence in getting that amendment passed uh, shows his commitment uh, and passion towards, uh, towards young people voting at that age. And I think the way that has changed the culture um, is quite profound over the decades. Well, I think if you look at the statistics of voting in that age group, that 18 to 21 or even to 25, uh, we see much more engagement now. And Jennings, obviously, for these last 50 years, his legacy has been, it's no longer a question of whether you can vote, it's that you have to take this responsibility as an American citizen to have your voice heard at the ballot box. Well, it's a very great privilege to welcome this very exciting group to the White House on the day that we celebrate our National Independence Day. We are certifying the 26th Amendment to the Constitution of the United States. The 26th Amendment passed faster than any other constitutional amendment. His persistence and leadership inspired his colleagues in Congress to finally refer to Randolph as the father of the 26th Amendment. More than five million Americans between 18 and 21 cast ballots in the 1972 election. As I'm reflecting back, I'm realizing too that I was in that age group that the very first time I voted was 1972, and I was 19 years old. And by letting me vote in 1972, not only did I get to vote for the president, but I also got to vote for my own father who was running for governor. Jennings was, uh, he was one of a kind, I think. The thing that really speaks to me about Senator Randolph is his real interest in the people on the ground. He could work with anyone, but he could also understand the little man and what he needed. I never met such a genteel type of a person. He always had time. His words were always so eloquently positioned to where it made you feel like you're pretty special. The Jennings Randolph Award goes to high schools that register 85 to 100% of their senior class to vote. Celebrating Randolph's leadership from 2017 to 2021, the state of West Virginia registered more than 67,000 high school students to vote. 
Today, Randolph's legacy is cemented in West Virginia. The 26th Amendment also allowed citizens younger than 21 to hold office. In 2014, Sarah Blair became the youngest legislator ever elected in the history of the United States when Berkeley County elected her to the West Virginia House of Delegates. Four years later, at just 19 years old, Caleb Hanna was the country's youngest black American elected to any state legislature, also in the West Virginia House. 2021 marked the 50th anniversary of the passage of the 26th Amendment. Old enough to fight, old enough to vote. And over the past five decades, it's become clear. Old enough to do so much more. Young ladies and young gentlemen, I believe in all of you who are here today. It was 1942 that I first introduced the legislation to give the right and the responsibility to young people 18, 19, and 20 to vote in this country.